What's up guys, Billy here, and today I'm going to be going through a pre-flight checklist that I've created to look over before I fly my drone. Now this is a step that is often looked over by a lot of people, but is very important as it can help you avoid any possible accidents or errors during your drone flights. Now before I begin, I just want to mention that I've created a Facebook page, so I'll leave the link to that as well as my Instagram and Twitter down in the description. Those three sites are probably the best way to keep up with me and also get in touch with me, so again, be sure to go and check those out if you want. Anyway, I've created this list to work with virtually any drone. I own the Spark, the Mavic, as well as the Phantom 4 Pro, and I figured it would be cumbersome to have multiple lists for multiple drones, so I made one to keep it simple, and I made it fairly, I guess, general. Uh, also, this list is always changing, so I'll try to keep you guys updated every month or so if I add things here or there. You may recognize some of these things on this list from the previous pre-flight checklist video I made, which was probably six or seven months ago, so this video is going to be an updated version. Let's stop talking and get into the video. First and foremost, make sure you have everything that you need. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten propellers, lightning cables, SD cards, and I mean really if you forget one thing, then you can't fly. No propellers can't fly, no batteries can't fly. It is imperative that you double or even triple check your bag before you leave the house. Now once you're in the field, it is time to check for no-fly zones. There are plenty of apps and websites out there to do so, and everyone seems to have their own personal preference. Mine is Kitty Hawk due to the user-friendly interface. This is necessary to make sure that the area you will be flying in isn't heavy with air traffic. Most of the time, I would say as long as you aren't literally directly next to an airport, you're fine, but it's always good to double check anyway. After you've done a check for no-fly zones and alerts, visually scope out the area that you'll be flying in for any obstacles. These can include power lines, trees, and private property. You certainly don't want to piss someone off. You'd be surprised at how much this can help you. It boosts my confidence getting familiar with the area. I still scope out my frequent flying spots because the environment can always change. Now that all the pesky checks are out of the way, it's time to get the drone set up. I always like to make sure that the battery I'm putting in is on full charge or at least close to it. It's a total waste of time to send a drone up with, say, a battery that is only filled up halfway because then you have to bring it right back down. Once the battery is inserted, it's time to lock on the propellers. As a simple check, I like to spin them around and push upwards to ensure that they are locked in tight. If one of these props fall off, your drone is certainly falling from the sky. Now it's time to insert the most pesky piece of equipment that there is, the micro SD card. I keep one of these in my backpack, car, and desk drawer so that in case I forget it somewhere, I always have an extra. It's really annoying to have to bring the drone back down if you forget to insert this, so be sure to make it a habit. Now it's time to apply an ND filter if you have it. I'm at a point where I can just tell what ND filter that I need depending on the light outside, and eventually you'll get good like that too, but until then, this step could take a few tries. You can try all the guides that you want and try to figure out the perfect filter, but at the end of the day, your eyes will never fail you. Now that the battery is in, the propellers are on, and the micro SD card has been inserted, it's time to power on the drone. Let it sit there for roughly 20 seconds to go through its gimbal and IMU calibration. Upon startup, you should be prompted if there's a firmware update within the DJI GO application. If there is a firmware update available and you don't feel like wasting data or battery life while you're away from your home, at least check to make sure that your firmware is consistent between the remote and drone itself. You can save the firmware update until you get on Wi-Fi as they are usually pretty hefty in size. An issue that I always run into is my drone not liking the SD card that I inserted. At times it will say error in the top right corner, so be sure to check for this before you take off. A quick fix can be to simply take the card out and then put it back in. If that doesn't work, go to the camera settings, click the gear icon, and then hit format SD card. This next step is to calibrate the compass and is only required if you have traveled a great distance with your drone. For example, I drove all the way to New Mexico with my drone in the back seat and needed to do a compass calibration due to all the miles that I drove. If you're just flying in your backyard each day, there's no need to do this unless you encounter a compass error. Now it is time to do a check on all of the drone's systems. Click in the top left corner and scroll down to be sure that all systems are normal and you have no errors to deal with. Once all systems are good to go, it's time to set up the camera. I usually double check my resolution, white balance, and other settings before messing with my aperture and shutter speed. Typically you'll have to reset those when you're up in the air anyway, but it's good to set a basis. If you notice that your shot is tilted, you'll want to correct this by adjusting the gimbal roll. Just like with your camera settings, this may need to be adjusted depending on what subject you're looking at, but it's good to do a slight correction right at the beginning. Once all of your checks are checked and your settings are set, we want to take off and let our drone hover for about 10 seconds. During this time, listen for any unusual sounds. If it's all good, it's time for our final step, flight. 
Anyway, that wraps up my pre-flight checklist. Up on the screen, I'll put the full entire list, just so you guys can get a general overview of everything that I talked about. It's gotten to a point now where I really don't need to have this printed out because everything has become muscle memory. But until you start to remember everything that you need to do, I'd recommend having a little printout inside of your case, just so you can glance at it before you go and fly your drone. But guys, that's going to do it for me today. Be sure to leave me a comment down below, letting me know some of the different things that are in your pre-flight checklist. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.